Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank David Connor for nominating me from DIT. And then I'd like to thank the Irish Wall Network for um, having me here today. A fabulous opportunity. Um, right, it's a mouthful, I know, but it was a subject that I feel passionate about. I'm from one of those market towns. I'm from Ivy Leagues in County Leash. So I was trying to look at how different communities interact with the planning system per se. So the best way I thought was to find towns of equal size and of, of with similarities. They're all, um, in terms of their, their scale, uh, well, you, you've got the commonality of, of uh, architectural heritage, the planned towns, there are generally uh, quite a lot of historical uh, content to them. There's, um, in terms of population, Abbey Leaks would be the, the baby uh, at 1863, but it has, serves a catchment of nearly 10,000. So again, rather than looking at these towns in, t in terms of their own size, they serve a much wider catchment, trying to analyze them from the point of view of that wider catchment. So uh, as you'll see, if you take out the um, rival town allowances, they vary from about 11 and a half down to 7,000. Dingo is different in that it is cut off by a mountain and it is very much its own area, very distinct and discrete part of the country, which you'll probably all be familiar with. Whereas uh, Cashel um, and Slonakilty would be quite similar in that they're there are rival towns around them, but they are they do have that critical mass. Um, so I felt that they were they're all tier three, tier four service towns. So they're down the pecking order from the principal service towns. Um, so we thought that you know that that has a fragility, lends a fragility because there obviously is a lot more emphasis on shopping in the the major towns. Um, how did I go about it? Lit review, multiple case study, site visits, walk and talk research on local area plans, functional area plans, county development plans. And then the meat of it was getting out of the bonnet and talking to the stakeholders on site. So it was the planners, it was the architects, it was the uh, business leaders. Um, and then, you know, between trying to triangulate between the different positions <coughs> from the community through the business and into the, the official, the, whether it's the county council or the town council, uh, just that's the literature. Uh, trouble with the literature on this is because of the majority of the literature that I found was UK, and the majority of it was very much around uh, the demise of the glittering chains, the retraction of the multiple, very different paradigm. In Ireland, we've got a lot more independence, and particularly these towns, they're characterised by predominantly smaller independent retailers, um, and then. Obviously, you have the whole tapestry of other, um, your GAA clubs, your rugby clubs, your tidy towns. These are, these are all principal stakeholders, I find, that they, they're the ones that are actually out on the ground and doing things. Um, I'm going to start with two, perhaps a little bit negative, but I think it's worth just pitching these in. Uh, the first one is, the, I just found this in the middle of an essay, which I found interesting, the term that the market town represents a false, oversimplistic picture of the varied and broader significance of these places, encouraging stereotypic, even romantic notions that are long out of date. Now bear in mind that that's coming from a UK context, so some of these towns have been poured out and there's very little left other than the architecture. Uh, but then the other is um, Orla Murphy, who wrote a very interesting book in 2012, towns of Ireland. She took four towns and she basically did a similar thing. She, she cut, cut through to look at the issues. Now, I think what she said here, it is very stark, but it is also something that we perhaps all have to own up to to some extent. The perception that as a fully functioning organisation no longer exists, or it applies. Online retail and larger out of town are poised to remove the last of the footfall from the ground. The main street in scenario is little more than a struggling museum piece, an artificial image of what we, li what we like to think town is, while our private lives we surf, click, park and stack. Let's face it, if we're honest, unfortunately we have been, we have been doing, doing this. And I think this is where the crux comes, it's about how are we going to gain, how are we going to deal with the resilience of these towns? Anyway, filtration, taking all of the 
the, the literature, as I say, predominantly UK, predominantly starting with Port as Review and going through a whole myriad of different pieces written about how we're going to save our high streets. Now, as I say, a lot of the issues are, are different and some of them are the same, but we, I felt that it was really important to drill out of that the most important thing. So the team was always on there, the town team, the, the plan. You never leave home without a plan. Not even, you know, it, you have to have something. Public realm plan. Some sometimes that's bound into a, a formal plan, whether it's a county development or a local area plan. Um, and then the established brand. This was seen as being significant and important. Uh, parking strategy. Just ask any business owner in Ireland, and the first thing they say, "Oh Jesus, the parking! Oh dear God Almighty! If we could only invent another couple of acres in the town centre, everything would be okay." Parking is a major issue. Market becoming more and more important. Local market, local distinctiveness, local, you know, where, is it, where, where are farmers having to deliver into uh, some place that distributes it out? Why can't they get a more direct connect to us? Um, so they're important. Transition team, you can live without them, but I think in the case of two of the towns that I looked at, they were incredibly, they did incredibly good work. And then the USP or the unique component. The team, obviously, the Tidy Towns Committee, the Heritage Companies, the clubs and associations, the Transition Towns Group, if they exist, the Chamber of Commerce, the Traders Association, or the National Advocacy Agency, they tend to be the team. And then, obviously, the process is the planning system itself and how it actually deals with plan making and planning for the future of these places. Um, the plan, the okay, coherent plan, you've got all sorts. You've got functional area plan in the case of Dingo, which I thought was very interesting. Um, Cashel, much more discreet. It's the town and that's it. And in the case of Abbey Leaks, we had an unusual one. We had a, a Department of Environment um, or Department of Arts, Culture and Heritage funded public realm plan, a sustainable communities plan, which uh, we found was a fantastic capacity building exercise to actually engage with this. We had workshops, we had lots and lots of people in the room talking about, yeah, if you had a blank piece of paper and all the money in the world, what would you do? What are the sort of things that the interventions that you might make and what are the what's missing from the set? Um Clonakilty, my God, I could be here all night and talking about Clonakilty. I mean it, it, the, the local area plan is there, but it's almost like a dynamic paradigm because things are they, they happen all the time and they're continuous. There's a continuous discussion going on. Um, and then when we go to, just to talk about the brand, I think the, it's important for some people. In the case of Dingle, there was a real sense that, well, why would you bother with a brand on here? Sure, everyone knows what we're talking about. You know, that there is an ID. You can see Dingle in your head when the word is pronounced. Clonakilty, ditto to some extent. Uh, we in Abbey Leaks felt we needed a brand because we have a lot of architectural heritage and we needed to sort of show that something that dis distinctive that showed that. Cashel lives within the shadow of the rock of Cashel, so obviously as an icon they don't come much stronger than that. Right, the public realm plan, not everywhere has one. We're lucky in that uh, Abbey Leaks, Clannacilty and Cashel all had public realm plans and all had, in the case of Cashel, were a long way into delivering on that plan, data from 2007, and they had been incrementally building away and undergrounding cables and opening up piazzas and working away. In Abbey Leaks, we, we had the, the fortune of having the Celtic Tiger to bestow a huge fund of money to restore our main square and the library, which uh, has been a huge, Philip, a great boost to us. Um, in the case of Clonakilty, things happened a little bit later. And um, I know uh, Julie Valoni, the town architect, is here today. And, uh, you know, again, a very dynamic process, an ongoing thing of delivering public realm projects as a dynamic process rather than a, a static thing. Um, just taking that public realm, Clonakilty, I think it's worthwhile we just look at that because this was a case of. What would have been a town that was like any other town in Ireland, very much dominated by the car. And uh, I remember Aston Square, and it was a car park. You literally, the car shunted along at two miles an hour. Um, look at it now, 
it still has cars, but the car has been demoted, and the it, the car is no longer the dominant feature here. It's it's the whole quality of materials. I'll tell you, Julie. Julie is from from uh, Sicily, and I remember the first time when, when I met with her, she talked about the fact that uh, in in Sicily, uh, it, as the song goes, you know, it's it, it's a room without a roof. It's a place that you know, as a child you play in and it's very much a social space. And I think what's happened here is that, that what would have been a hostile environment to the pedestrian and to the general public has been transformed into something very dynamic and very interactive and very well used. Huge, huge improvement to the, to the public realm and to the whole sense of pride that the, 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 that, that the community have had as a result. Um, that was continued through to Emmett Square uh, last, last year, and it's ongoing. Your pocket square is about to go on site, I'm told, and there are other pocket squares. So this is an ongoing project that will deliver this connection between Aslan Square, which is that one there, down the main drag, and then down as far as Emmett Square. And there's a, a wonderful project which I'm now told is opening in April of next year, which is the museum to Michael Collins. And that again, public, local authority funded and, and driven project. Um, exemplar, <coughs> it really made the, made the point to me that just how important the public realm is and that it is joined up and that it is something that's done, done as in, a, in a discussion, in a dialogue with the community. Um, whereas parking, 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 the very pragmatic way of dealing with parking down in Clonakilty, they just said, we're not going to charge because it'll only damage the businesses. Because you obviously had a situation where you had two large retailers with oodles of car parking and they would have had everybody for free and then you would have had to pay in the town centre. So a degree of pragmatism. That was, de that was dealt with easily at the time because there was a town council. And this is an old, a whole area of my study that I hadn't expected to encounter was putting people first or putting people last, as a man in Clonakilty said it to me, was where the town council was, was being taken away. And a lot of the decision making, presumably, around things like parking charges will now be taken away. You've got the municipal districts, you've got a complete change in, in the way that these decisions will be made. I have every faith that as a community they are not returning and that they're going to be very difficult to sway when it comes to issues such as parking. On the other hand, Dingle tried to do a parking strategy in 2007 and God help them, they did. They actually got a consultant to do a full parking analysis and strategy for the town. There was murder. They were nearly hanging engineers out of trees. There's a huge, huge difference between what might be best practice and what they will tolerate on the ground. And I think that should have been researched before they drafted this scheme, because that, while it sets out to ridicule it, it is fantastically eloquent how it actually describes how it would have impacted had it been delivered. Now, it might have been possible had it been done by way of a more collaborative and more consultative way, there may have been an opportunity to actually sell this but as a result, there is no parking strategy. There are two public car parks down at the, at the um, edge of the harbour, and it's a free-for-all after that. So good luck. If you want to find parking there, wait till midnight, because after that, it's, it just, it's madness. It's absolutely mayhem. It needs something doing. It needs the, the, the issue addressing, but it needs, there's obviously a way of doing this. Now, that, that whole issue of parking is... A major problem in, in Cashel because again in Cashel you have the rock which is managed by the OPW and then you've got the town which was then managed by the town council which is now managed by the county council and trying to find a reciprocal arrangement for car parking was like drawing teeth because nobody wanted to kind of there, there, at one time you could actually park in the at the rock and then go into the town centre without having to buy another ticket but you couldn't do it the other way around it wasn't right um, case study analysis was literally just grilling out those issues and seeing who's got what and what, where does it work, what, you know, I shall have a proposed World Heritage Site with the, the royal sites, uh, Tara, Cashel, um, I can't remember the others, but they're, basically that would make it very unique. Cashel, interestingly, didn't have a lot of things that you'd associate with a market town. They didn't have a market. 
They were given an area, they were allocated an area by the town council down the back of a car park in Super Value, and of course it withered and died within a matter of weeks. It just didn't happen. So again, maybe a bit more discussion that might have been solved. The community, the community sat with them and said, um, what do you want? But they did a pre-draft plan. They, uh, they, they did a consultation with the community, uh, sat down, went through it all, and they said, we want a brand. And here we are, four years later, they still don't have a brand. Um, conclusions and recommendations. Uh, local area plans for tests. Uh, there's some threshold. 5,000 or more is when you get an LAP, a local area plan. A lot of these towns are sub-threshold and they're actually required to have plans in order for them to be robust and to go forward. Pre-draft consultation as a standard norm. There's no obligation. We think it's a good thing. Online consultation is part of plan making procedures. Again, it doesn't cost a lot, it works. In the case of, of Kerry, they actually ran a pilot and they got up to 40% additional consultation responses from the public. Uh, car parking, we spoke about breaking down silos, integrated multi-agency approaches. The case of Cashel, again, the silo with the, with the OVW managing the uh, rock. Public ground plan, very important. Develop community forum model for Irish market towns. Now I know that the Heritage Council have got a toolkit which is very much around that. It is appropriate in some cases, but I think it may be something that needs a little bit closer looking at. Funding bursary, now that we've got a completely restructured local government, why don't we give bursaries to these towns to allow them to set up these, uh, these bodies, these, these, these groups? What works, pre-draft development plan, teamwork collaboration, that goes without saying, but it does work. Look at Lonnie Kelsey. Regular planning clinic is absolutely fantastic because then again, the planning system is a dynamic and ongoing thing. Coherent uh, collaboration, local distinctiveness, identity, critical. What doesn't work? A lack of shared vision where people are not clearly on the same page. Um, no, da -da -da -da, you've seen all those before. So these are the things we need. We need the town team, we need the shared vision, we need the plan, we need the budget, we need the attractive public realm. We need a mix of uses, we need a mix of, we need access for all, we need parking, transport, night time only. And thank you. And you didn't ring the bell. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>